Hello, my name is David Webb, and this is a video for Dweebovision. I am a Scrabble Grandmaster, and in this video I am going to play Scrabble while providing in-game commentary on my moves. Hopefully this will help to improve your game, and be fun to watch. The game has just started, so let's join the action. It's me to go first. I, uh, I do not have a bingo, and I have some scoring, high-scoring, non bingo -y tiles. And I'd like to play all of them, even though I'm keeping a slightly vowel heavy rack leave. 26 points. I've got a scoring tile in the Z, duplicate tiles in the D and the O. I can sort that out with Zuid or Zuids. Can't see anywhere for either of those. Now I could play DZO and Joe, and I'm inclined to. This sorts out the duplicate scores quite well. And the rack leaves okay, and it's a good score, 35 points. Now this looks close to a bingo. If if an I was an E, I would have osteoid. I don't think there is a seven here. But is there an eight? I've got wood and woods. Well, not too many floaters to consider. And I can't see a bingo. I do have vidiot in column nine through the V, but that doesn't score very much. I'm drawn to column 12 parallel to Zo. I could play Io in that spot and die and Zo. That would sort the rack out and score quite well but my opponent may well play in that spot now i do have a t for going after j o so i could play ooted which would be a lot better a poorer rack leave but a much bigger score that's been blocked do see doesn't take anything after it. Now, do I have anything through the C in terms of the bingo? Not that I can see. That's quite a good move by my opponent. He hasn't provided very much at all. So I certainly want to play off an I and an O. How can I do that? Do I have anything through the sea? Well, I could play Dicot. Only 16 points. I can't see anything beginning with the T. I'm thinking about putting the T on the end of Joe. I'm looking to see if I can play in column 9 through the V, starting one square above it. So placing an O next to the O of joy. So, well, yes, there's O void. And what this has going for it is that it's got a very good rack leave. Not vowel heavy. Only 14 points, but I was struggling to score more than that anyway. And this opens the board up, which is quite good, since I have an S and a bingo rack leave. Not a good pickup. Three eyes. I do have a scoring tile in the P. I'm just considering the rack in case I have a bingo, but I don't think I do. Now I certainly want to play off two eyes. And if I could play off just two eyes, I would have a good rack lead, but I don't think that's going to be possible. I've got the epi prefix, but the remaining tiles aren't bingo-y. My opponent may be able to score quite well in column 8, coming down onto the triple word square at 08. I've got TP, T-I-P-I, -I, as a four-letter play. 
Great, my opponent hasn't scored hugely. Just 19 points. And he's provided somewhere for me to play TP and keep a good rack leave, which is across here. Sight is slightly vulnerable to vowels, but it's a pretty good four-letter set. Well, I don't draw vowels. Instead, I draw the Q. But I do have an I to go with it. But if I played Chi, my rack leave's pretty awful. So, despite having a very good rack leave at the end of last go, E-I-S-T, my pick of G-Q-T is pretty atrocious. And there's nowhere great for Q-I. I could play it in row C, making G twice. That's only 22 points. And similarly in row L. But that's probably just enough to prefer it to changing. Now through an A, I would have cat. And that would leave a better rack leave, but no available A's at the moment. In fact, only one A has been played. A couple of U's have been played, but not in good enough places for me to use. Which is a shame. In column 12, if I had, if I had an A or an O, I might be able to play through the U of Ducey. Well, my opponent plays a U. I can't use it. I've still got Chi up here. This doesn't give terribly much away. And 22 points is better than changing. Just the one vowel. And no scoring tiles. I could play dressed in column 14. And tippies. 27 points. That's not great. And it would be a shame to burn the S. I'd like to hang on to the E, so maybe I could play in column 8 through the A of Wavy. And I'd like to play off one of my T's as well. Okay, nice bingo by my opponent, 75 points. He takes a 40-point lead. And provides no floaters for bingos. So what I was thinking of doing was gat down here. Only 10 points, but the Rackley's pretty good. However, it's quite possible that I could draw two consonants and have limited scoring prospects next go. And gat doesn't really open the board up which I would like to do since I'm behind. So what can I do that's better? I could play drag in that spot. 12 points, still pretty poor. My opponent's provided two hotspots, row O for putting an S on the end of realist and this triple word square at H15. So I'm quite happy to leave both of those open. Now, I could play Teg down here. It burns the E. But the score may justify that. 22 points, I think the score does justify that. And if I pick up vowels, this is a pretty bingo -y keep. And there's still plenty of vowels in the bag. I have Nitrids, which plays in row O. And also in row N, making Doubts. I have a slight doubt about it, but not enough to not play it. So hopefully one of those will remain available. In fact, both do.
This should get me right back in the game. Eighty-five points. And that's okay as a pickup. It's fairly balanced. Not bingo-y, but I do have scoring tiles. So I'm drawn again to column eight. So I could play Cham, Who, and Mo. And that stays available, just 16 points for my opponent. So this is what I was thinking of doing. Twenty-one points. Not a great score, but it's an okay rack leave. And it keeps me half a bingo ahead on a tight board, which is quite useful. I'm just wondering if I can extend this play to score slightly more by hooking eyed. Well, I don't think I can, so I think I'll go with this. Not a great rack, but a scoring tile in the W, so hopefully I can keep scoring 20 or more. This board can't be looking too great for my opponent. Practically no bingo lanes. There's row F for bingos ending in C. And not much else. Possibly column 15 with a multiple overlap of realists. There are, however, two blanks out there, so a bingo can't be ruled out. Now, how to resolve this rack? I could do with playing off all three tiles that I picked up, the two A's and the W, and I can do that with our in terms of my rack. I'm not sure there's anywhere to actually play that. Well, I could play whack in row F, placing the W, well, just whack, W-A-A-C. That does open the board up and provide an, a scoring opportunity for my opponent in row E. And it doesn't score very much. Just 14 points for my opponent, that's good. I could play Y, W, A, I at the top of column 15 for 18 points. It's not quite playing off the two A's. But I'm not sure I need to worry too much about that. Now, what about sticking an A next to the Z? Can I do that? So it would be a play with U, A in it. And my L or W couldn't go next to Joe. So UAL, UAW. I don't think there's anything there, unfortunately. Now I've got 12 minutes left. My opponent's got 13. What can I do here? Well, not too many opportunities on this board. I'm just looking in column 12 to see if I can play parallel to tag. I could play WHA, but then I don't have a, a further tile to play. Well, I don't, I don't feel great about this because of the rack leave, but the score is quite good. And I, I say that because although the score isn't quite good, it's only 18 points, this is a blocked board. So there are, are limited scoring opportunities. So a score of 18 is good in the context of this board. Well, that, that could have been worse. And actually, on a very tight board, it's quite handy having a run of scoring tiles that the W enabled me to get close to 20 points. And previously, the I had the scoring tiles in Cham. Here, I've got the F. So this should enable me to keep scoring in the order of 20 points. And I do have a 50-point lead, which I may need to simply hang on to, which is fine. 
Now I note that my F can go next to the I of realists, where my opponent has just played. But it can also go underneath the E of here. So where else can it play? And I'm also keeping an eye on column 12 for placing an A next to the, to the Z. I can't see a way of doing that with this rack. So what about this spot here? Well, it's not placing the, the F here, but I could play Leaf, which helps to resolve some of the duplicates as well. Eighteen points again, and note that it was only eleven for my opponent, which shows how limited this board is. Now, can I do better than that? Ten minutes left. This is a nice play in that it provides nothing for my opponent. So I think I will go with this. And the blanks are still out there. And again, I have a, a scoring tile this time the Y, which is another tile that can go next to J, O. And I've got an O for going next to the Z as well as the A. Well, I still can't see anything in that spot. Now, the Y being my scoring tile, where can I play it? Well, this board is incredibly tight. I can see Dogi and Yup in row K for 17 points and there goes my opponent with just 10 points this is excellent now do i have anything better than doogie it's quite nice to see the board completely scleroticizing 17 points well before i get carried away is is this really the best i can do Well, I think it's okay. Well, I, I now do not have a scoring tile. So the scores could go down, especially if my opponent doesn't open the board up. Now, Emo is good. So with no scoring tiles on my rack, I'm looking at scoring tiles on the board. So I could have a play beginning W-E down here. I could play Wheel. Although I wouldn't want to place a vowel next to this triple word square. With the two Bs, an F and an M and a P out there. Almost every scoring tile would benefit from that. Now, my opponent's played Car, which takes an A and an O in front. So I could play a Regal or Rolag. Rolag's quite nice because it it does something. Oh, it places the G on the double letter square, that's it. Rolag, 23. I'm leaving a very unbalanced rack leave. I'm providing a very useful floater. So what about playing down from this W, a four-letter play? That takes out row L as a bingo lane. Can I do that without placing an A here? Well, I can in the sense that I can place an E there. But that's actually not helpful at all because that's just as useful. Or I could place an R there and play Wero. That's looking much better. That provides nothing for my opponent at all, and it kills the bingo lane he's opened. And the rack leave is balanced. I have Brangle. Nowhere to play it. But my opponent should be feeling, or getting to feel, quite desperate, I would hope. Because he has to bingo to catch me up. And there are no bingo lanes on this board, apart from row F ending in the C. And I guess row A for a bingo ending in W, but there aren't many of those. 
That's certainly not a row I would drop points to close down. And this board is so tight that I'm really waiting to, for my opponent to play so that I've, I can play where he has opened the board up because there's almost no other options. Now, that's quite, well, quite a nice move by my opponent. I can't... If I play in row L, then I'm providing lots of floaters, and the remaining tiles are pretty bingo-y. But I'm 60 points ahead right now. The play I'm thinking about doing is bangle. This gives me a shot at the blanks. And the reason for considering this, despite the floaters, is that I think I'm going to struggle to play anywhere if I don't play in this spot. But 26 points isn't 40 points, so and I'm wrecking the rack leave. Is this really the right thing to do? How much of a lead would this give me? This would take me to 3.30, a 90-point lead. If my opponent bingos, he might get 80. I'd be still have a slight lead, and I'd be on turn. And playing six tiles helps to expedite the end of the game. There are 17 in the bag, so this would take the bag down to just 11 tiles. I am tempted by this. But do I really want to provide an easy spot for my opponent to bingo? He's not going to bingo if I don't do this. This is really difficult. Let me put this back. So, what would be an alternative to Bangle? I'm not worried about the B opening up column 1, because the B isn't a particularly dangerous floater. It's the others I'm worried about, the A, N and G. Very tricky, and I've only got five minutes left. Well, what my opponent hasn't done with playing two is opened up a bingo lane. So row L is not a bingo lane. I could play Gorn in column eight. Eleven points. Very tricky. I, I'm so inclined to go with the bangle play because I think I can win even if my opponent bingos. I don't draw either blank. My opponent could have both. So we could be seeing a bingo coming down now. If my opponent doesn't bingo, I've got the F and the P as scoring tiles. I myself don't have a bingo. Pint the N of Bangle is in the wrong place for Pinafore, and I can't see anything through the A, G, or B. I could play Profane in column 3, which would play off a whole bunch of tiles and expedite the end of the game, and obstruct some of the floaters in Bangle. Looking at the remaining tiles, I think it's highly, highly likely that my opponent does have a bingo. But will he spot it? That bangle move is really bugging me because there were no bingo lanes. Great, my opponent has not bingoed. 
eight tiles in the bag, so Profane has a lot of merit. My opponent only scored 18 points, so if I put this down, I can explain. So Profane, 32 points, a great score. That's going to give me over 100 points lead. If my opponent bingos, the best he can do is come to within about 20. So I'm in good shape. And playing six tiles leaves only two in the bag. So my opponent's bingoing prospects are diminished. Great, I draw one of the blanks. If my opponent has got the X, he may struggle to bingo. And I may have a bingo myself. I can't see anything ending with W. I've blocked bingos ending IC in row F. My opponent does have the X, or did have it. So he's emptied the bag, I can see what he's got. But can I bingo? Column 5 is a nice bingo lane. I don't think Morting is good, otherwise that would play. Let me run through the alphabet. I've got three minutes left. Almost any bingo will play. Haven't seen anything yet. Still nothing. That's the Morting play, which might be good. Still nothing. Still nothing. Try Gammy, not try Gomi. Two minutes left. Well, I can't see anything, which is a shame. Because that would end because that would end the game in a nice way. It would be foolish to play Morting because if it comes off, my opponent could bingo and win. He certainly will have bingos in his remaining in his rack. So what to do? Just two minutes left. Pretty much any score is going to guarantee the win. So I could play Trigo. Down here. Twenty-six points, that's going to give me three eighty eight, over a hundred point lead. And that will be enough to to win. One minute thirty left. I'm just pausing in case in case I have a bingo. Well it's quite possible I don't. G and M are not particularly synergetic. Yeah, I think this is going to be enough. And if my opponent doesn't bingo out, I should be able to score with the M. And, well, I don't know if my opponent will bingo. This column two for bingos ending next to the P would require the blank to be an O or a U. So he may not have a bingo. The T isn't a bingo floater because he can only play six tiles in row E. I'm wondering if I can play my M next to this E, and I can with Ma or Mi. Well, almost any vowel. 
I can't see a way of the play beginning with A, which would score one more point. So where else can my M go? Well, not too many places. I could play bow and op. So I'm not going to be unable to go out if my opponent doesn't bingo. Now I know column six is also a bingo lane for a three tile overlap. Okay, my opponent does not find a bingo. And I think I will get this over with. 15 points. My opponent ends the game. And the final score, 304 to my opponent, 405 to me. A winning margin of 101 points. So pretty exciting game. Very tight for most of it. Let's see what I missed. It was me to go first. I played Wavy. That looks fine. My opponent went next. He played Joy. This was my rack. And I think I did play Dzo. That looks fine. My opponent's rack. He plays Juicy. And then this was a tricky rack. As you can see, no great scores available. Idiot. Well, beginning at G4 is not good. Placing a vowel immediately above this double letter square. Making H1 a super hot lane. I played Ovoid. That looks fine. My opponent's rack. That looks pretty close to a bingo. Yeah, a whole bunch of them. He missed them, fortunately, for me. And this was my rack, and I played TP. But not in the spot that's being suggested. It's suggesting TP and Jot, keeping IES. But I played TP for seven fewer points, keeping EIST. Well, does the T help the rack by seven points? It may do. EIST is a very good rack leave. But there won't be much between them, between those moves. My opponent's rack, that looks close to a bingo. He doesn't have one this time. And this is my rack, which was pretty grim. I played Chi at C14, that looks fine. My opponent bingos with realist. And I guess when my opponent only played one tile on the previous move, I could have inferred that he had a pretty good six-letter set. But I think my priority was still sorting my rack out, and Chi did that. This is my rack. And what did I do here? I played Teg. Which... Uh, well, yes, it appears down here for 22, keeping DRST. Gert at G15. Well, that's, that's interesting. That might might be better. Certainly keeping three consonants and no vowels is better than keeping four consonants and no vowels. And the score slightly better. My opponent's rack, he plays here. And now I have Nitrids. Which is best. What I didn't spot was Distrain at 8C. Wow, overlapping Ovoid in three spots. Pretty good. My opponent's rack, he plays Vor. And now I had a run of racks with high scoring tiles and limited bingo prospects, which was fine because I was ahead and there were limited bingo lanes on this board. I played Cham for 21. I could have got slightly more playing at G12. Here. C-A-R-C-H, Ch and He. Yep, that would have been pretty good. Or Cham at F13. Okay, so playing in and around here. So my play of Cham was slightly inferior. My opponent's rack. He played any, and this was my rack. A W here. I didn't consider that. I don't think. Yeah, that's poor because W A I up here uses the same tiles but scores five fewer points than playing A W across here. So 
that would have been better. My opponent plays Nan, and then this is my rack, and what did I do here? I played my F. I played Leaf for 18. Yep, that looks fine. My opponent plays Joel. And this was my rack. Note here, Yeow, that's one of the new words that's come in. And I played just Yup for 17. Yup, which I quite like. As you can see, there's very few points on offer here, and Yup doesn't provide anything for my opponent. My opponent plays Car. He does open up a bingo lane, which is what he should be doing. And I played Wero for 14. And I like it. There wasn't that many more points available, and Wero achieved a lot and gave nothing away. The main thing it achieved was shutting it out, row L. My opponent's rack, and KA doesn't just take an A and an O in front, it also takes an S, so my opponent actually did have resents, which Wero blocked. So my opponent played two, and this was uh, the probably the most interesting move in the game. I played Bangle for 26, and I don't think the options here really include the really take into account the importance of the fact that the board has no bingo lanes or very limited bingo lanes at the moment so i'm still in the dark as to whether bangle was best this was my opponent's rack did he have a bingo no he didn't wow okay he's slightly unlucky i think to have three e's and two s's he played bren for 18 this was my rack and this is where I played Profane for 32. I didn't see 4 Pine. That would have been slightly better. My opponent's rack. Does he have a bingo? No, he doesn't. He plays X. And now finally, did I have a bingo? No. Wow, I'm surprised. I really did feel that there was something here. And there wasn't. So clearly Morting isn't good. And I played Trigo, which wasn't great. But most of the winning plays are in column 5. Gimor, I'm not sure I knew that. Gizmo, I suppose, 29, pretty good. What did I do? I played Trigo for 26. Actually, that's fine. Really, really very little difference between these moves. Finally, does my opponent have a bingo? He doesn't. Well, I think he's pretty unfortunate not to have a bingo, given the remaining tiles towards the end of that game. And finally... M's for 20 at N1. Oh gosh, that was foolish. I could have just played M's across here instead of MA down here. Oh well, not to worry. That cost me five points. And that was the end of the game. So I think that was a pretty exciting game. It was an incredibly tight board. That doesn't happen very often. Generally, my playing style is to keep the board fairly open so that I can play bingos, which is what I like doing and if i've got a better word knowledge than my opponent an open board generally is to my advantage because there are more opportunities to play and therefore more opportunities to play better words than one's opponent but sometimes the board just does get tight and this was the case and if the board gets tight and you're ahead you should certainly give consideration to keeping it tight and i think i was able to um, do that over a number of moves in this game the, the board did then open up as it as it often does and we had an exciting end game where my if my opponent had bingoed it could have been quite close so lots to think about in that game and in, in particular the bangle move if you can think of a of a better move then please do leave a comment below with the with the reasoning because it's it is quite an, an intriguing move Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching that video and got something out of it. My name is David Webb, and this has been a video for DweeboVision.